Now, based on what has come up in the past couple of years, I have tried to classify the areas as five major areas. The first one is puzzles. We are all familiar with those. Then you have Venn diagrams. You have a calculation or math based questions. Uh, you have optimization based questions and we also have something which is miscellaneous. So roughly if you were to look at the distribution over there, you will probably get about one puzzle in a slot which is purely a puzzle sort of thing. Usually you had about one Venn diagram. There are some slots which did not have a Venn diagram. Uh, you would definitely have four to five optimization based questions, which we'll see how to go about it. You might get one calculation based set and one which is a completely from the left field. It is a type of novel sort of a question or a miscellaneous sort of a question, which are not usually covered in either mocks or most of the study material, which is available in the market. We'll look at each of these areas in more detail now. Now, the first area that we talked about are puzzles. Puzzles, you have a lot of reference material, whether it's mocks or past papers or even uh, printed study material, which is available in the market. Puzzles are, I mean, if you look at mocks, more than 20, uh, more than almost half of the uh, question paper is usually is in puzzles. But if you look at the actual CAT, only about one, max two can be purely qualified as puzzles. What does come in puzzles? You have arrangements, whether they are sitting in a row or they are sitting in a circle, uh, distributions where you have to assign uh, people uh, or characteristics to people like color of the shirt, surname, companies, etc. Then you have comparisons, A is taller than B, uh, C is shorter than B, what is the comparison between A and C and so on. And lastly, you have questions on binary logic. A is a truth teller, B is a liar, C can do both then figure out certain statements, etc. <clears throat> now, a word of caution when you are actually solving puzzles is that puzzles can be made as difficult as possible. Honestly, to create a puzzle, uh, all you need to do is look at some variables and look at uh, remove certain data and you can create those puzzles. And you can have four different attributes like for example, color of shirt, uh, age of the person, who is he or she married to and the city that he belongs to. I can add one more variable. The puzzle will become complex, more and more complex. These are puzzles which usually get asked in bank peer examination. The problem with these type of puzzles is that the larger the set, it is very easy for people to actually just drop this set, right? I will not even go about solving this particular question. CAT is not like this. CAT is usually in, you get a puzzle where which will entice you into solving it will look sort of like an easy sort of a puzzle but once you go and dig deep into it then you figure out that okay you are inside some sort of a quicksand and you're sucked into it so those type of questions are not usually asked in bank PO. we look at how to go about improving that particular area as well but uh, please be a little careful about going overboard with puzzles because it's very easy to go overboard with puzzles i can give you five variables and the puzzle can become very, very difficult. Another piece of advice, binary logic, while it's there in most of the, uh, most of the study material, even it's there in even our course as well. Okay. Uh, binary logic has not appeared in CAD for quite a long time. Okay. It's good to know, uh, there are some very technical aspects on how to go about solving it, but it has not come up in CAD for quite a lot of time. So tread a little carefully when you're going overboard with those type of puzzles. Now, another favorite of the CAT examiners is the Venn diagrams. Uh, Venn diagrams, again, you'll have a lot of material which will be available on Venn diagrams. And again, just like with puzzles, people can go really, really crazy about how the Venn diagrams can be handled. Generally, you have two or three variable Venn diagrams. Rarely, it has been reported that in the last uh, four or five years ago, there was one uh, Venn diagram which had four variables in it. More than knowing uh, how to tackle them quickly, you need to know how to manipulate the different values which are available regions like exactly one uh, uh, satisfies exactly one criteria, satisfy exactly two criteria, satisfies exactly three criteria and so on. You also need to figure out what is being talked about. So if I say only A or A, there is a difference between which regions you are being talked about. So there is a difference between people who like only football and people who like football. So 
in the second case you will have people who can like some other sport as well whereas in the first case out of the given sports only football is there uh, it has come up very frequently in cat almost each slot in the last uh, couple of years had one question which had or one set which had a venn diagram sort of a uh, requirement again please don't go overboard you also have questions on venn diagram optimization which satisfies exactly three criteria satisfies exactly four criteria that's a very favorite topic of all these people who set mock papers again it has not come up in cat it has never come up in cat and it's very likely that it's not going to come up in cat because it's a very technical sort of a case cat is not a very technical examination cat requires you to uh, figure out on the spot what exactly is going on right so go to venn diagrams dig deep into it that's a very good thing to have but don't go overboard with some of the crazy puzzles which actually come up over there the next type of puzzles are calculation or you can also call them math based puzzles okay here you have some sort of a mathematical uh, relationship which has been expanded or used here for example in 2017 we saw a set which had permutations and combinations and counting methods being used or tested the airline set then you had uh, sets which had the thumb impressions of diff- or thumb and the finger imprints of people getting into it uh, in 2016 you had a set which was on probability Uh, expected value of default etc in 2000 and <coughs> uh, in 2018 we saw sales charts percentages all those concepts were used so you basically need to brush up on your counting methods on your uh, basic arithmetic skills like averages mixtures percentages percentage calculations fractions etc and this is one area which you can improve very easily if you are very good in arithmetic if you are very good in basic mathematical concepts this is one area which should not be very difficult for you uh, it's also a very good uh, way of preparing for the other exams for example ift has a lot of calculation uh, one part of uh, one piece of advice don't go overboard again on learning speed maths vedic mathematics multiplying five digit number with a five digit number etc in cat you have a calculator an on screen calculator you can use it most of the time and get the answer so calculation methods are not that great or not that important again it's there you can try it out for just an ift examination but even if you are not that good in calculation you can do it just for fun don't do it only i mean that should not be the reason if you're not good in calculation that should not be the reason why you cannot be good in either maths or dilr the next area which is something which people neglect quite a bit or sometimes again people go overboard quite a bit is optimization now optimization there are a lot of different words that you can use for optimization basically these are cases where you'll have some sort of a mathematical or a logical sort of a puzzle or a calculation based set which will be given and not a lot of information is given to you usually these questions can be formed under maxima and minima or maximization or minimization you can have theory from logic based data interpretation or quant based reasoning you can give any sort of bullshit to actually put it over there there are like four or five concepts in optimization in fact almost half of our course videos is based on optimization and we also have uh, quite a few questions which come up in cat which are purely on optimization uh, techniques which are there <coughs> so please don't go again overboard into too many different methods of optimization there are like five or six things which you need to know and more than knowing it you need to know where to apply those optimization skills one piece of advice and i have put this here very specifically is the topic of games and tournaments games and tournament is a favorite of uh, is a favorite of mock pe- uh, people who set these mock papers because it's a very technical sort of an aspect you can again have because we have a uh, lot of us watch or f- play sports uh, like football or uh, we follow the ipl or any of the series people do tend to produce a lot of questions on games and tournaments games and tournaments again has not come up in cat it used to come in 2004 2005 2006 those type of papers it has not come up in cat for the last 8 or 9 years so uh, again don't go overboard on games and tournaments based questions you need to know a couple of uh, concepts the basic uh, idea of how a round robin uh, tournament works and how a, a knockout tournament works everything is basically after that optimization and pure common sense
the last type of questions are basically sundries or miscellaneous or extra sort of thing they they cannot be classified in like one particular branch they are like as the name suggests miscellaneous so you can have questions on cubes networks diagrams family trees maybe possible you can have some sort of mathematical puzzles uh, what we have seen is that again in the uh, last couple of years each slot usually has about one question which one set which usually is cannot be classified directly as uh, any of the other that we have discussed okay f to give you an example in 2018 we had a question where you have to fill out a matrix of numbers where adjacent numbers cannot be the same 2017 you had a set which was basically on platform you had to jump from one platform or move from one platform to the other 2016 had a set which was on cubes and numbering of those cubes so these are questions which have not appeared uh, they are available in many of these uh, many of the material but they also tend to have very little frequency when it comes to mock examinations etc so these are questions which tend to be very easy actually if you look at the solutions that we have given out uh, the questions are actually pretty easy they are not very difficult to solve it's just that the novelty of the question and sudden appearance of those questions which actually end up making the students a little jittery in fact i would suggest go on and suggest that you should actually try to figure out those type of questions and then try to solve it and see whether it's actually an easy question or not now next we'll move on to now that we know what exactly comes up in cat next we'll move on to see how to go about preparing for this particular section which is actually very important.